Welcome to this video where we will explore the main ideas of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, a classic treatise on military strategy that has influenced countless wars and domains throughout history. Whether you are interested in warfare, politics, business, or personal development, you will find valuable insights from this ancient masterpiece. Sun Tzu was a Chinese military commander who lived in the 6th century BC. He wrote The Art of War as a guide for his king and generals on how to win wars. The book consists of 13 chapters, each covering a different aspect of warfare, such as planning, maneuvering, terrain, fire, and espionage. The book is not only about the tactics and techniques of war, but also about the philosophy and psychology of war. The core philosophy of the art of war is based on the principle of avoiding what is strong and striking at what is weak. Sun Tzu believed that the best way to win a war is to break the enemy's resistance without fighting, by using deception, intelligence, and strategy. He emphasized the importance of knowing the enemy and oneself, and adapting to the changing circumstances of war. He also advocated for the moral and ethical aspects of war, such as treating the captured soldiers well, minimizing the loss of life and resources, and respecting the laws of heaven and earth. To illustrate the timeless wisdom of Sun Tzu's The Art of War, let's look at some examples of how his philosophy of war has influenced various historical events and modern domains. One of the most famous battles in history is the Battle of Marathon, which took place in 490 BC between the Greeks and the Persians. The Persians had a huge army of about 100,000 soldiers, while the Greeks had only about 10,000. The Persians landed on the plain of Marathon, expecting an easy victory. However, the Greeks used deception and surprise to defeat them. They pretended to retreat, luring the Persians into a narrow pass, where they attacked them from both sides. They also used their superior knowledge of the terrain to take advantage of the hills and the sea. They exploited the enemy's weaknesses, such as their heavy armor, their lack of discipline, and their overconfidence. They attacked when the enemy was unprepared, such as when they were loading their ships or having their lunch. The result was a decisive victory for the Greeks, who killed about 6,000 Persians and lost only about 200 of their own. Another example of how Sun Tzu's philosophy of war has influenced history is the Vietnam War, which lasted from 1955 to 1975 between the Communist North Vietnam and the Democratic South Vietnam, supported by the United States. The Americans had a superior military force, with advanced weapons, technology, and air power. However, the Viet Cong, the guerrilla fighters of the North, used guerrilla warfare tactics to resist them. They used their superior knowledge of the terrain, such as the jungles, the mountains, and the tunnels, to hide, ambush, and strike. They used deception and diversion, such as booby traps, fake villages, and fake radio transmissions, to confuse and mislead the Americans. They used intelligence and espionage, such as spies, informers, and propaganda, to gather information and undermine the morale of the Americans. They outthought the enemy rather than outfighting him, using their patience, persistence, and resilience. They also used their political and ideological advantage, such as their nationalism, their socialism, and their support from the local population and the international community. The result was a humiliating defeat for the Americans, who lost about 58,000 soldiers and withdrew from Vietnam in 1973. A third example of how Sun Tzu's philosophy of war has influenced history is the D-Day invasion, which took place on June 6, 1944, during World War II. The Allies, consisting of the United States, Britain, Canada, and other countries, launched a massive amphibious assault on the coast of Normandy, France, to liberate Europe from the Nazi occupation. The Germans had a formidable defense system, known as the Atlantic Wall, along the coast, with thousands of bunkers, mines, guns, and soldiers. However, the Allies used misinformation and diversion to deceive the Germans. They created a fake army, known as the First United States Army Group, led by General George Patton, and made it appear that they were planning to invade Calais, the closest point to England. They used fake radio messages, fake newspapers, fake airfields, and fake tanks to make the Germans believe the opposite of the truth. They also used double agents, such as Juan Pugil Garcia, codenamed Garbo, to feed false information to the Germans. They divided the enemy's forces, making them spread their resources and attention across a wide area. They also used their superior air power, naval power, and intelligence, such as the breaking of the Enigma Code, to support their invasion. The result was a successful landing of about 156,000 Allied troops on five beaches, codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword, which marked the beginning of the end of the Nazi regime. These are just some of the examples of how Sun Tzu's The Art of War has influenced history and modern domains. The book is still relevant and applicable today, 
not only for military leaders, but also for anyone who wants to achieve success in any field of endeavor. Whether you are a student, a teacher, a manager, an entrepreneur, or a politician, you can learn from the timeless wisdom of Sun Tzu and apply his principles to your own situation. The Art of War is not only a book about war, but also a book about life. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our other videos on the classics of literature, philosophy, and history. See you next time.